Welcome back to CIA Kings 2, and after destabilizing a foreign power, which is the Iron Throne, I've decided we're going to get ourselves a political alliance with them and build our own regime, which will hopefully help us in the future and we can drain their natural resources, that type of thing. So, an agreement has been reached with King Tagon to see King Tagon Galenar, the guy that we actually installed on the Iron Throne, and Queen Miguel Zaparian wed, so our character's granddaughter, I believe. Now we have the choice to give him gold or silver, or the customary dowry, or not, not enough. Uh... Honestly, I want this to be... I want this to be a good political marriage, you know? I feel like this could be very powerful for us, having a another sort of house superior influenced empire on our doorstep wouldn't be... Or not necessarily on our doorstep, but, you know, um, helping keep balance between us would be pretty useful. So I'm going to give them all the gold and silver. Um, it's 10 opinion for 48 months, so really it is not a good deal at all, because we could probably just send him the customary dowry instead of a regular gift. Yeah. I mean, that would be a lot cheaper. So I'm going to do that one instead. I'm going to send him a regular gift for 44 opinion and then save myself something like 60 gold for four times the opinion. So it wasn't that... Not that good a deal in hindsight. Anyway, um, hopefully those two will have a lovely time there. To the Righteous Charmer, Emperor Bob, the Insidious Westerland Traders, absolutely no embargo wars. So, last episode we were about to fist Karth with the Flamey Hand. Um, unfortunately the dragon is still maimed, but I figured we'd, we'd get the political marriage out of the way there. Um, oh no, it's wounded, so hopefully this won't take too long at all. The people of Yonghai can no longer work the fields. Well, unfortunately, it's winter, so we probably don't want to go to war now anyway. Um, betrothed can marry. Who is that? Oh, us to our 14-year-old granddaughter. Welcome to CK2. What a great start to the episode, eh? This man is a coward, that's for certain. He can't fight. Shadows and loud noises frighten him, and blood makes him faint. We can um, admonish our good friend, Gerono, or uh, Ngai. Honestly, I feel like... I mean, this dude... Herbologist, mystic, honorable. I mean, you seem all right. Uh, we, he might make for a good court position. In fact, he is my court position. So, you know what? I'm not going to upset my court position. I'm going to upset this random dude instead. There you go. Get fucked. So, the plan is still exactly what we had before. News from Lorath by Trial of Combat. I thought that was awesome for a second. The plan is the same as what we had before, the five-part plan. Uh, we're up to part two of that five-part plan, and this five-part plan is obviously grabbing car cash. Part three, which was previously by time, has been replaced with breed dragons until we've got a dragon army. Um, as one of you suggested a couple of episodes ago, the best way to do that, put our character, or put the character we want to hatch a dragon egg, so our son, in charge of army, send it to all the important sites, and hopefully we'll get some dragon knowledge as well. Um, original Soulborn last episode left a massive essay, so if you're interested in some good game mechanic, go and read that through. But one of the points that I took away from it was that apparently dragon hatching becomes much, much easier after we've hatched, um, three dragons. And then magic returns when you've hatched three dragons. So, really we need to make that our priority anyway, because that would allow us to get some of the rare and special powers out of the Alchemist Guild, which I'm going to rejoin, because as I discussed before, fuck the bank. Um, so we've got Grandmaster, use a rare lecture that gives you immortality, like true immortality, not the Relore immortality. And then we've also got Wisdom, uh, learning plus two, and it says they obtain rare powers. Now, I'm not sure this is exactly, you know, shooting fireballs out of our fingers and, you know, Wingardium Leviosaring top box buffs pants off or whatever, but it will give us, um, some good stat buffs, is to my knowledge all it does. But, uh, if you know anything more about that, and if you know how to do it, let me know in a comment, and I will have a read through. Guess it's just a case of waiting for the dragon now, eh? So, uh, what are our important decisions, then? What have we got? We can look into the flame. Did I see that right? Uh, oh, we can donate to the guild... 50 gold for 100 knowledge, that's not a terrible deal, especially as we're trying to get ranked up as quickly as possible. Now, we already know the secrets of Wildfire, because we learned that probably about, what, 70 years ago now? How old is our dude? 90! That's insane. So, even with Immortal and CK2, I wouldn't expect to see a character live long past 150, because, you know, as we've seen before with Top Bog, um, assassinations, uprising, rebellions, deposition, that type of thing. So, I wouldn't really expect to see a character live much past, you know, two centuries. Our dude, up to 90, not doing too bad, considering it wasn't even a true uh, immortality we got there. Not bad. But we've already learned Wildfire, so really all we've got to do is just churn out the knowledge. So, every chance we get to donate to the Alchemist Guild, I'm definitely going to do. Winter's coming. Soon be cardigan weather. And there's a man in a hat. Um, Isco, he is a Kaya 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 Nayan. Um, he is an attractive man, so I'm going to say his talents will be useful here. Wink, no homo. And we're going to try and actually sell him off as a slave. Um, see what we can get for him. Now, if they have congenital traits, so attractive genius, strong, obviously they sell for more. Their skills affect how much they sell for and their traits as well, so a brave, ambitious slave will sell for more than, um, you know, someone who's craven and, uh, content, for example. Times to do a bit, or maybe a content slave would sell for more. I'm not entirely sure, but hopefully you understand what I'm sort of getting out there. Um, nobody wants to buy him. This seems, uh, oh, 15 gold, really? 
Doesn't see much for a dude who has that congenital trait, but fuck it. I'm going to sell him off anyway. We could have kept him around as breeding stock. So obviously, if you've got a genius slave and a genius slave, breeding them together is going to... It's just standard CK2 genetics, right? So you've got a higher chance of getting more genius kids. Dothraki have crossed the sea, which I'm pretty sure goes against all law, And they're invading... Um, Yaros. I think we're going to kick him out. These Dothraki are really starting to do my heading because they are taking a pretty significant amount of gold. Um, these boys especially will. Oh, they're offering us 400 gold to go to war with Lice. Lease. I think it's Lease, isn't it? Because they're Lysine. Um No, I'll not take sides. Not today, thank you. Yeah, no, these Dothraki are really starting to do my heading. So we could... We could, and this is probably not a bad idea, actually. Make a tributary out of Zono. And make a tributary out of Zerko. Which puts this nice, nice Dothraki barrier basically around all of our provinces. Um, Kohor are the only other people we share a border with, but they're not going to raid us. Um, yeah, that would actually cover everything, because Hesh are Lazarine. They're not... Oh, well, they're supposed to be... Sorry? Dothraki? They're supposed to be Lazarine, because it's the kingdom of Lazar. Which are like um, a culture closely related to Dothraki, but they're feudal. Then they're, they're, Or they're tribal, I should say. Um, they're not, you know, nomads. But apparently it's just a Dothraki lord that's settled here. So can he still raid? Is it a cultural or religion specific? Um, can raid infidel neighbors for loops. Yeah, it's culturally specific there rather than him just being a tribal or nomad raider. So we would also need to get rid of Hesh. But seeing as he is... Um, seeing as this boy... I mean, who's his heir? Kafo. Who the fuck is Kafo? Um, <laughs> what the fuck has Kafo got? I can't even see. Oh, right. He's a small boy. Um, now, again, I just want to set up a nice Doth Dothraki barrier here so they stop raiding us and stealing all our gold. Um, concentrate on something useful instead. She's getting diligent. Excellent. And we're going to kill someone else. Now, last time I did that, I'm pretty sure I killed my grandson. So I should probably uh, be a little more careful with that. Oh, shit. He actually did loot that gold. That doesn't seem entirely fair that they can just put down their troops after that. I'm not a big fan of that aspect of things. Especially as they can't take boats because they're fucking Dothraki. That's a bit annoying. Aha. I was, uh, here we go. New top bog based law. Look at this. Bride of Shadow. Just as soon as you heard the news of the Mad Emperor's deposition. Okay, last of it, last episode. At the end of last episode, we saw that top bog had once again lost control of the Empire. Um, what's that, sixth, seventh time? Just as soon as you heard the news of the Mad Emperor's deposition, a new rumor has spread through the traders who have dead into the now ruins of Yi Ti. These rumors say that the Emperor has returned once again, this time accompanied by a powerful bride whose own fury and power may even surpass that of the Emperor himself. The Magi and Red Priests of your court have come to the simple conclusion that the longer it takes to truly seal the labyrinths and separate the insane monarch from his power source, the greater the repercussions will be for each of his returns. They all burn the same. Lord Protector Topbog falls in love with Abeloth. There he is. He's back again. Nothing can kill- What could possibly kill this man? I wonder, besides many, many game mechanics, multiple times, almost a dozen times through this fucking campaign, who will stop Top Bog besides random in-game events? Um, so yeah, he's back again, funnily enough, and he's got himself, look at that, Lady Protector Aberroth of the Shadow Sea, 9,614 years of age. Oh, she's also a great old one. Oh, that's nice. It's good that you find love in weird places. I wonder if she was like a Tinder match or something. Um, he's still not looking too good. Apparently, he's also turned blind since I think we've last seen him. Um, Marshall minus six, intrigue minus two. He's still got fairly good stats considering that is to say um, he hasn't got any sort of special stat buffing trait. This one gives a lot of bonuses to cultures and things to, rec uh, to represent the madness and the sort of uh, Cthulhu-esque control he has over people. Um, I'm going to say one-handed, one-legged. Yeah, he's really not doing well for himself, eh? Poor Top Bog. Poor Top Bog. Everyone F's in chat for Top... Well, I mean, he's alive. So maybe F's next time he dies, which I'm sure will be by the end of this fucking episode, let's be honest. I owe him nothing. Get out of here, earhead. Um, that's a new racial slur I've come up for, the Dothraki. Mainly because they all have ears on their head. I don't know why that is. Um, as far as I know, no one else has complained about this on the forum, so it might be with my own installation. If you also have earhead Dothraki, for the love of God, let me know. Because um, I've been trying to fix it, and I can't work out what it's causing it. Anyway, um, Dragon Conquest of Hesh. Like I said, I want to build a nice barrier. Oh, shit, we still got to wait for the fucking dragon. Damn it, dragon. Big Anus' wound has finally healed, returning her to full suppository. Sorry, strength. Okay, good. So, wounded, gone. We can now do some Dragon Conquests. Uh, that was no console commands either, promise. Um, it isn't, you know, exactly a rare event there. Lord Freeholder Tagon decided to send a small gift as a token. That's the only thing I worry about, right? Doing these edited episodes. I know people like the edited stuff because it means we actually get more content in a 30-minute video. But I have had some comments occasionally being like, oh, that seems a bit suspect. What, that, that, that I'd wait until the dragon's healed before I carried on with the episode. Yeah, maybe it's just common sense. Anyway, uh, my coffers are almost empty. Evidently. 
and the peasants are restless. I only have one steward, Crisozo. Chris, uh, Chris, Crisozo. And even he is doing a wonderful job, and he cannot do more than one thing at once. Send him to increase the tax income. Send him to calm the peasants. Um, I mean, this event doesn't make any fucking sense. Do I want 0 0.1 tax, or... Uh, that should scale. That should scale with your monthly income. It might make this event a bit more of a, a relevant choice. Obviously, I'm going to go for the revolt risk instead, then. Okay, so... Now... Step two, Fist Carp. So we've got ourselves uh, the big fat Cenobite here. Let's go for Dragon Conquest of Port Yosh. And then, oh god, Shadow Sea right there. Nekos. Fucking Nekos. Um, Lord Protected Top Bog has 75,000 men. He's also at war. Attacking Shadow King Summerlicker the Mad. Oh shit, a false Shadow King. Look at this dude though. Old Ones, the Scourge. Oh my fuck. <laughs> Stressed, one-handed, depressed, possessed. One-eyed, lunatic, cruel, selfish. What is he? Tyrant level tyrant level two, because it's five points for every level, and dishonorable level two as well there. Holy shit. Um, I'm sure Top Bog will have absolutely no difficulty dealing with this dude. I was going to say, if he's distracted, we might also want to grab um, Nekos, Nekos, Knee, but unfortunately, it's a little too busy there. All right. Proofs of justice. Thank you. He has what? Your Imperial Majesty, I see no point in conflict with you and your dragons. I hereby surrender, and we will swear fealty to you forthwith. With regards... Ken Bellow, Karmath. <laughs> now, Karkath. Kar Karkath? Karkash. Sorry, I thought it ended in like Karth does. Okay, Lord Lyrat, the Tolerant. Maybe he'll just immediately surrender to us as well. Here we go, team. Um, so. Uh, joke's on you. I haven't got any troops anyway. It's just threatening. We've, we've sent 108 boats to just stand there menacingly. They don't know if we've got troops on them or not. Surrender? Surrender? Oh. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, Lord Blalapo Bla Soloris of the Isle of Women has arranged to meet you in the hopes of selling you a new slave. No. Um, City of Old Volantis. Absolutely fabricate the claim on that. That way we can revoke it. So, Karkash is not surrendering. Not much of a surprise there. Um, why did I put the Holy Order down? Oh, my God. Now they're under the contract of the Principality of the Golden Fields. Incredible. Just what we wanted. Um, is it worth just hiring mercs then and keeping those kicking around? Uh, no. Because apparently all the mercenaries in this mod are fucking god-awful. Um, yeah, no, that's goddamn terrible. We could, I could re-enable retinues, depending on what you guys think. Um, it would make our lives incredibly difficult to fight the Shadow Sea if those start getting retinues, because obviously his retinue cap is going to be gigantic compared to mine. Like, absolutely ridiculous, because not only do they have a ridiculous amount of tech, um, oh no, wait, they don't have tech. I was going to say, his learning is going to give them a ridiculous amount of tech, but that's not true at all. He has much more developed provinces than us, so obviously the Empire of Yuti, whereas we've got a load of shitty ruins. Um... I could re-enable retinues, but I feel like we'd just get absolutely swamped. Anyway, let me know what you think about that. Maybe I'll uh, implement that for the future. Right, okay. Um, in that case, we're going to have to use our own troops for our own domain like some sort of absolute savage. Um, let's bring the troops just around to Slaver's Bay and we'll pick everyone up from there. A daughter born to Daryl and Oris Saparian. I don't know who any of you people are. All right. Um, Patron Bob, you lack a proper office for alchemy, of course. We do have the money for it, so why the hell not, eh? Um, so we've done this event before, but obviously we failed, or, or we didn't quite get the highest level. So I suppose we could just keep living and rejoining, if you wanted to metagame it to that extent. See, a rare Zaparian dead. No. Who the fuck is a rare Zaparian? That's me button mashing again. A truly useful laboratory can take both time and money to assemble, but without an offer that's dedicated to alchemy, I doubt I will ever be able to unveil the deeper secrets of the world. Could have done with a comma in there, eh? For science. Absolutely. We've got the money for it. So, again... This one's not really super intuitive. I did discuss this a few episodes ago, so I'm going into massive detail with this. Um, 24 points available. Certain events give more points. There's a maximum of 24 points, and you have to get every single one right to get the full 24 points. You only get the biggest bonus lab if you get all 24 points. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have to get every single event perfect here. We have to have ingredients that can rot, which might be, once again, where I've screwed us here, because I always tend to remember this before we've actually started the event here. So gather herbs in the hills. Um, then we say build an, uh, an efficient and accessible office for research. We have to go with that one, otherwise you can't get the 24 points in the best lab. Um, and seeing as we're immortal, this is fairly relevant, actually, to try and get the best one we can. Right. Hopefully we can get some herbs. And then you always spend money. Um, I require a state of the art laboratory. You always spend money on the highest one. That's basically how you do it, right? And then you just get a little bit lucky, hopefully building an alchemy cabinet to store your ingredients, prevent them going off. If you manage to succeed with that, you get your 24 point and the full blown lab. Tormo Nartos has been a leal and able servant. Um, I am nothing. Get out of here. Horrible. 
Like, absolutely horrible. My... Oh, she came out really fucking good, didn't she? Hang on, her education hasn't even finished yet. 9, 15, 15, 15, 16. Attractive genius, skilled fighter, ambitious, diligent lunatic. She's, like, insanely good. Willful becomes ambitious. She's already got that. So it could become brave, authoritative, or stubborn. Brave or authoritative are both proper, you know, A-tier um, traits. Let's assume that, like, ambitious is A-plus tier. S-tier, for those of you who play uh, weeb games. I'd say that uh, the ambitious and... Oh, sorry. Brave and authoritative are both A-tier traits there. Excellent. I should do, like, a trait list. Roll one, D2. Oh, fuck. Okay. P precious smells. Okay, so that's that's an event that's not really relevant. That's going to disappear when we built this lad. Anyway, um, I should do a Roll 1D2 games. Top 10 CK2 traits, or, or ranking all the CK2 traits, I guess. Right. The ignorant laboratory equipment can be both frightening and alien, so again, spend the most money. Oh, shit. Uh, why listen to Rabble? Oh, you know what? This one, this one is where we lose the prestige. Why listen to Rabble? If we try and accommodate them, um, we lose efficiency, and that will make you not get enough points. Uh, this, this event can throw you a fair amount of, uh, of curveballs. Wants to buy several set thousand slaves for 400 gold. Now, what's our slave level in Illyria right now? Let's just take a look. Uh, extensive. Oh, uh, I could be persuaded, I guess. Yeah, why the hell not? It's not like I'm building anything. And if I'm not building anything, that's money. I'm just, just going to waste. Port the tools we need. Please. Ingredients. Hey, there we go. Right, so we might succeed with this now. My wife has developed an unusual taste. So you guys have told me um, the hare's head and the fish's eye and the quail's like all give negative traits, right? So I have to, or, or one of these two give her good traits. I don't remember. Um, apparently this one like gives club footed. This one gives hair lift. This one gives something else like blind. I have no idea. Anyway, um, we'll go for this one then. Because I don't particularly want her to, or I don't want the, the heir to have some hideous, hideous defamation. Um, def deformation? I have no idea how you pronounce that. Sometimes achieving the difference, identifying success, substance, achieving it. Mahaps reference li literature. My librarian shall not rest until we have such a collection. Um, which I'm pretty sure is how I was supposed to read that. Right, get everyone onto boats. I just gave up trying to read that, and I'm going to be honest with you. Get them all to read. Hey, we can get my 15-year-old pregnant wife um, some filthy, filthy books. Oh, that crooked Lord Amadon Superin caught in the favor in order to force you to pardon his devious crimes. You will no longer be able to take hostile action against him without looking like a tyrant. And that's him poking us in our kingly chest and us being very, very shocked. That he has poked us in our kingly chest with his uh, with his very bent and nubby finger there. Oh, we just got impressive laboratory. Well, that's not very good at all. That's like the second best one. Um, is that not the best one? I actually don't think it is. In fact, I don't even think that's the second best one. I think that's the third best one. Oh, well, never mind. Doesn't matter too much. Um, we built a lab. We gained 200 S turret knowledge there. Uh, sure, have some familiar faces around you. Now, war with... Apparently, we won 74% of this war and I haven't even done anything. What? What do you mean? Battle of Illyria? Oh, they must have landed some troops in the capital. Hey, well, that works out pretty goddamn well. Well, this will be over in no time. Hello. Uh, right, let's deploy the dragon and torch it. So, we do have a very young... I don't know if I explained this, but Original Soulbond did explain it in the comment that basically the age of the dragon represents the size of it. Oh, sorry, the marshal represents the size of the dragon. Um, so... Our dragon is size 19, which isn't very big. Like, the biggest dragons were, like, size 120. Our dragon is 19, so it's actually still very, very small. Um, as it gets older, obviously, it's less chance to get maimed, wounded, that type of stuff. So it's still kind of risky at this stage. But honestly, fuck it. Why not? Um, what are we looking at? 2,000. Oh, this is going to be done in no time. That attrition is atrocious here. What the fuck? Okay, 50 gold. Uh, Lyria prospers. Thank you very much. That's what I wanted to hear. Marshal, fetch me this traitor. Evidence this seems like nonsense. Um, so Prince Amadon. My son, my, of course, my chosen son, the, the son that I poured everything into trying to make the chosen one. Uh, the one who betrayed us and forced a pardon through, supposedly found some evidence of this dude trying to betray us. He's Mayronese. Honestly, you know what? Fine. Yeah, I, I believe him. Fuck it. Um, not just saying that because King Bob is racist, but might help unify the realm if we were to, say, give that land out to a good Valyrian man instead. Right, we are done with this one. The envoys of Lord Freeholder take on. This dude is just constantly... Trying to sway us, eh? My god, he's a good character. Holy shit. Brilliant steward genius. Um, very impressive. I am touched. Thank you. Brilliant my camp. We gain one slave level. Oh my god, I'm really glad we sold those slaves then in hindsight, because Karth is apparently abundant with that. Let him rot, and thank you very much. You are now ours. We have Karkash. Um, can we just release him from prison? Uh, is he already out of prison? I mean... Oh, we inherited his personal collection of slaves as well. Look at that. Holy shit. There we go. 
So in these mountains here, I forget what these ones are called. These aren't the... Oh, these are the Bone Mountains, aren't they? So in the Bone Mountains are basically these huge fortresses, almost similar to the Wall, basically, in Westeros. Um, as supposedly, in some real extended Game of Thrones lore, uh, the original White Walkers, so the, the ice zombies that come down from the very far north and attack the wall, supposedly came from this area in the Grey Wastes and attacked into Essos, hence the whole Azor High pushing them back type of thing. But the, some of the, uh, the so there are the five forts in Yeeti, which are here, and then there's also another line of fortresses down the Bone Mountains here, and this is almost like a, a, a geographical uh, version of the wall, not man-made, but sort of a naturally occurring one, and acted as the original wall against the White Walkers. So... It would be kind of good if we were to grab all of these and use them as a sort of uh, pushback against Top Box. I think it looks as if he has expanded north a little bit more as well. So if he grabs all of this, this would act as a very, very nice geographical barrier, as I said, grabbing all of them. So it's the kingdoms of the Ashabad, um, the kingdoms of whatever the fuck they're called. I'm never going to remember it. Uh, but it's, it's the kingdom of the, the Hayakun. So it's the Baya Shabad, uh, the Kaya Kaya Naya. And uh, the Samriana as well, and then Ashabad right down the south there. And they're the, uh, they're the sort of matriarchy kingdoms. So only some men are allowed to are allowed to breed. The rest of them are all turned into eunuchs. But it'd be kind of cool to grab these for ourselves so that we could use them as that natural barrier against Topbog. And any forces he may happen to summon from the outer worlds. <clears throat> so I think we might want to grab these at some stage. And, and that might be a case of actually pushing up through the Dothraki. Um, oh, you know what? Now would be a really good time to tri make a tributary out of Carl Zono, eh? Because he's almost unified the Dothraki. Or we just wait until he becomes like the Great Carl. Which is what happens when they unify a particular amount of the Dothraki. Because then there is the Dijor, um Dothraki. Yeah, the Dothraki Sea. If they control enough of it, they can create this and become sort of like the Great Carl. As Carl Drogo was. Um, at which point we could just vassalize them then. Or at least make them into a tributary. And then we're safe from all their raids. I've grown increasingly attached to my 15 year old granddaughter. Who I am married to and has given birth to I assume. Oh, I didn't even notice. Prince Anus of North Valyria. Why? Why would you name him that? Please, can I rename him? I didn't even notice this kid was born. Um, lunatic. Right, sure. Let's educate him because he's most likely going to be our actual proper heir, seeing as everyone else is going to be dead by the time that our character dies. Um, let's educate him. We could rename Anus to something a bit more appropriate. Um... Why don't you guys, in the comments, give me a legitimate good name for Prince Anus? Because I can never think of any. Um, plus, it's a good way to get the YouTube interaction up, uh, which means that my video is more preferred by the uh, by the algorithm if there's more comments on this one. So you guys leave some comments, as many as you possibly can, suggest the names for this kid, like this video, thumbs up, share it to Twitter a lot, and then hopefully uh, we'll give him a name that isn't Prince Anus. And hopefully between the thousand of you, or who, however many watch this, we can come up with something better. Um, do I want to become chaste? And only for my uh, for my 15 year old granddaughter wife. Well, obviously. Um, oh, hang on. She's way more related to us than a granddaughter. Sister wife. My sister. Oh my god. She's like incredibly closely related to us. My daughter. My son. Holy shit. So she is. Let me run some numbers on this. So here's some very very rough back of the napkin math here from using using programs that I don't really understand. Right. But apparently. Uh, for a parent slash, uh, child, full sibling, relative, so for example, if you have a brother who is, uh, the same parents as you, your average percent DNA shared there, as it says, is 50%. According to this inbreeding calculator, which is apparently, uh, what you use to calculate whether or not pedigree dogs should fuck, uh, Bob and Gail share about, uh, between 62.5 to 75% shared DNA, which makes them slightly more related than full siblings, but slightly less related than identical twins. And that's great to hear. Um, <laughs> pretty fucked up, you. There's a really good Reddit thread that I, I forgot to mention. Uh, someone actually calculated how closely related, uh, very slight spoilers, well, kind of major spoilers for the last series of Game of Thrones if you haven't seen it. Uh, so skip past the next sort of 20 seconds or so. Um, somebody worked out how closely related Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen are related. Um, and it turns out they're also more closely related than um, full-blown siblings. So that's also pretty fun. I'll post a link to that if I can find it. If I don't, please, for the love of God, remind me and I'll go and dig that up from Reddit somewhere. But yeah, no, I was, I was just going through the family tree, seeing how closely related to uh, everyone people are. But of course, it all comes from Preparian and his um, original wife who was a Targaryen as well. Oh my god, I didn't even take that into account that all the Targaryens are related. Okay, so it's probably even more than that. It, it's all fucked up. Anyway, um, so him and his technically granddaughter, well, granddaughter, but technically um, incredibly closely related sibling 
Uh, I'm kind of surprised that we haven't had more incest traits in hindsight then. Jesus, that's insane. I think, to my knowledge, Valyrians are much less likely to get the incest trait, or in the Game of Thrones world, it just doesn't exist so much. Um, I don't know whether it's specifically Targaryen blood, though, because they did sort of talk about how Joffrey was a little fucked up, probably because of... Um, Cersei and uh, Jamie's relationship. But anyway, more than you could possibly be gone. Uh, or, we consider your price. Yeah, absolutely. Job well done. Game 15 gold. So that's pretty fun. I just thought that was a nice little diatribe there. So, what have we got going on for ourselves? I think a lot more Dragon Conquest. Do we want to grab Zono now is the real question. Because that would give us a hell of a fucking foot in the door. Um, it would also give us a hell of a lot of protection as well. It's a real shame that we can't... If we Dragon Conquest him, it's literally just going to make him our tributary. It's a real shame you can't uh, go above and beyond that and sort of, um, I don't know, vassalize him. I don't think you can vassalize Nomad, so can you? Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. Dragon Conquest of Jarbo. Let's make ourselves the biggest powerhouse in Essos bar none because we're going to have this massive, massive Dothraki horde under us. Um, and then we'll also go for Capo. That's going to make us pretty nicely defended. And then I think grabbing the Bone Mountains. Step three is going to be a combination of Dragon Breeding and Bone Mountains. Before we do that, though, you and Red Priest Mataris spent many hours gazing into the flames. Lady Mar Marila is plotting to kill Emperor Bob the Meek, as in the woman that we put back in charge of the religion, the woman that we restored to power in the Great Plaza in Volantis is plotting to kill us. The Lord of Light revealed her treachery. I feel like of all the people to plot to kill... Probably your Lord's Chosen One is not the most appropriate one, especially as the flame has shown us that. Um, so I think the most appropriate thing to do then, let's go to Lady Marla. Uh, let's go ahead and trick her in prison. Uh, she'll literally plot no more objects. Get in prison. And then, you know what I think the best thing to do would be? Just burn the fucker. Oh, okay, we've got to prove at trial that, uh, you know, she is guilty. Apparently we can't just say, oh, I saw her in flame, she's trying to, trying to kill us dead. So let's call up a trial. Fingers crossed we find her guilty here and we can just... <laughs> ah, there we go. Um, now we've got a Dothraki horde that'll do our bidding as well, so that's pretty nice. We we'll grab Capo as well. Then we're raid proof, and we've got, like I said, an entire Dothraki horde that we can call into battle. We we'll grab Capo as well at some stage. Might as well grab Hesh, because why the fuck not at this stage? We'll tidy up Karth. We'll grab the Bone Mountains, which unfortunately will mean to go to war with Top Box Boff. Um, what else can we do? We could just Dragon Conquest the Shadow Sea, take the whole thing. I don't want to do that. I feel like that's not a good cast of spell I'd use against this dude. Because who wants to rule this? Great. We can rule an empire of madmen and, you know, old god-possessed lunatics. That doesn't seem like the best idea to me. Especially as it's all falling into ruin and the scourge is rampant. I think we need to stick up or massive fortifications here and hospitals on every pass. So, like, the Sand Road, Jade Point, um, Stone Road, and Steel Road. Put a hospital on every single one of those and stop... The Scourge coming back. It's probably the best idea. Anyway, Tormo's going to interrogate her. He made a poor case. Innocent. Innocent. I have no choice but to release her. Or we could just execute her now before she gets... Oh, she is released. She's already technically... She's immune to hostile actions. What? They didn't believe that we saw her treachery in the flame. And to be fair, she's the head of their religion. So they could have seen that as a political play. A division. A division in the Empire. Um, right then, well, if we can't do that, we will prove to her. I mean, man, that's a real shame, but that is, I suppose, the downside to using fire magic is, you know, people are going to be skeptics. She stopped the plot, at least, although I don't trust her from now on. This guy's trying to fabricate a claim on... Oh, get out of here. You're making it too easy for me, my dude. Um, we can't imprison him because he's in hiding as well. We could plot to incite revolt. That seems like a good idea. That way we can always just revoke new gifts and then give it away to um, good old-fashioned Valerian boys. A little bit of empire management wouldn't go amiss because we do still have a lot of vassals that just straight up hate us um, kicking around in the empire. Let's go to the opinion map mode. Um, let's go to the opinion mode. Not the map mode. I don't care about the map mode. It's, it's useless. Yeah, as you can see here, I'd still say a good two-thirds of our vassals, not big fans of us here. She's going to be pissed off because we took her in prison. Threatened by claim fabrication. To be fair, slightly our own fault, but she is trying to kill us. Um, which, again, should be some big red flag for their religion, no pun intended. Okay, so, um, what are we missing? Court physician. Shit, can we hire a new one from the intrigue menu? I don't think we can, though, can we? Uh, recruit court physician. There we go. Right, I'm going to mark that special interest. I hope I do not have to wait long. We could buy some slaves. You know what? Honestly, I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Let's buy some slaves. Let's build the city up while we... Oh, I thought no one would sell it to us then. That's fine. Thank you. Now, we want our troops to reinforce because obviously Top Bar could attack at any time and our troops are barely reinforced. It is 3,400 out of 13,000. Let's build ourselves up. 
Let's become powerful. And let's, uh, let's get ready for what is going to be a major, major war here. Thank you all for watching. Karth is ours. The Dothraki have bent the knee to the Dragon Lord. Uh, we've got a nice political marriage set up there with the Iron Throne as well. Uh, no children as of yet, because apparently the king is a homosexual. But maybe, eventually, we'll get a descendant there, and that'll be a nice political ally. I think this is uh, this has been a very productive episode for the realm of Emperor Bob the Meek. And he's got himself um, a new wife, who is only 15, so we'll ignore that a little bit. Top Bog come back. Top Bog has come back. Top Bog came back. Um, and now we've got a lot to worry about at that front, but that's fine. How many men did he have in the end? Uh, what's he whittled himself down to? Still 93,000. Jesus, okay. Um... Yeah, I think... Oh, God, wants to win a war. Yeah, we'll worry about that in the future. A big shout-out to Zachary Harris, Arik, Sean Thornton, Haydog, Sidini, Tim Bragg, Loras, Michael Mullen, Bacchus Bacchus, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Tyler Birch, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Palvis Presley, Logan Thorne, Asuna Kirito, Conspired C, Jimbo, Orxwolf, Facundo Vasquez, Tom Terrier 18, Escape, Average Gamer 419, and Jackson Windman. Thank you all for your support, the Insanity Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for keeping the channel going. Hopefully you guys are enthralled by this epic tale, the game, and definitely only the game has weaved for us at this stage. Hope you guys are enjoying it still. And a big shout out as well to Nathaniel Limbo, Brandon Mantoni, Euphrates, Jack Allen, Betamus Max, Panther Pearl, Gabriel Vanders, Llewellyn Thomas, Nathan Flores, Yon Dries, Haji Dumar, Alpha Scuff, Kevin Saunders, Duncan217, Zet McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Chris Hancock, Sir Thor the Swede, Asero, Nick, Will Wade, Noah Gallimore, Fraser Brennan, The Insane Pickle, and Adam Person. Thank you all for your support as well.